I'm going to show you how to Adobe, how to create a logo that looks a bit like um, Ed's Electric here. Okay, so I can see I've got. What are some of the primitive shapes you see in here? Yeah, so I can see circle here, circle here. I can see a square here, rectangle, and then boom, we got an E, right? Yes. It creates an E. Um, so you could almost sort of say we have a semicircle, semicircle. But I'm actually going to treat. I'll show. I'll show you. Okay, here we go. Let's make Ed's electric. Will it look exactly the same? Probably not, because I'm not that talented. Here we go. I'm going to say file new again. I'm going to just use a four by four space. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to make sure it says inches here and inches here. Here's my space. All right. So I'm going to start off. Creating the, um, yeah, that'd be great. The rectangle along the bottom. Um, unlike last time when we were just using outlines because we were tracing something, this time I'm gonna create a fill that's black and no outline at all. So it's the opposite of what we did last time. So here's the fill, there's the outline, uh, and I'm just gonna start drawing stuff. So boom, there's my plug cord, that's this part. Uh, I think it should be a little bit skinnier. So I'm just going to make it a little skinnier. Then I'm going to go up here. I'm going to make myself an ellipse. I'm going to hold shift while I draw it. Okay. And if I don't hold shift, it changes the aspect ratio. But holding shift makes it a perfect circle. Does that make sense? Okay. Then I'm going to kind of bump it around a bit. I want it to sort of be perfectly halfway up and down this thing. So when I move it, do you see that green line that appeared? That's showing me it's exactly at half. Okay. I'm going to copy that, so I'm just going to say edit, copy, and then I'm going to say edit, paste, and then I'm going to drag one over here. And again, I'm going to look for that, and I'm going to try and move it an exact distance away from the edges. This one, it looks pretty close, but not quite. So maybe I'm going to select both of those. See how I did that? I chose both shapes. Now I can just move them around a bit with my keyboard. That looks pretty symmetrical. And then lastly, I'm going to go and I'm going to make a rectangle here. So I'll, I'll start right at the center, drag it over here, down there, boom. Okay, so kind of looking like Ed's electric, right? No. Yes. We're getting there though, right? Maybe. Maybe? Yeah. Thank you. Some are kind, others harsh critics. She gets the kind yes. award. So I've got one rectangle, one circle, another square, uh, another circle, uh, there's my original rectangle. So what I'm going to do to start with, right now these are all separate bits that I could drag around. I'm going to combine them all into one shape. Okay, so I'm going to select them all and I'm going to do this. I'm going to say object group. Okay, so now they're all one shape. See? But they're not exactly. They're grouped together and I'll, I'll kind of prove it to you. I'll put on like a, a pink outline. So you can still see all the separate shapes, right? I'll leave that pink outline on for just a second. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually combine them all together. And the way I do that, and you just have to memorize this, you go to Effect, Pathfinder, and Add. And now it's all one shape, okay? So it's made up of separate shapes, but I can't pull them apart anymore. And you can tell they're all combined properly because it has an outline. Make sense? Yes. Last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make the E. Now I could do this a bunch of ways. I could put rectangles. I'm going to just try and find an E that works. So I'm going to go to my typing tool. That's this one. And I'm going to just plunk it right here. I'm going to make a big capital E. I can't see it, so I'm going to make it white. I'm going to... What am I going to change? I can change. I can make a bold, a bold E here. Bold. There are different types of bold. Oh, I don't think that one's the right one. Let's just do this bold. That looks pretty good. And it's the font Myriad Pro. I might try Arial. That one's pretty blocky. I oh, don't know. I like the other one better. Oh, that's wrong. Oops. All right. Now I'm going to stretch it. So I'm going to hold shift while I do this too, so it doesn't ruin the aspect ratio. I'm going to go all the way to the top, and all the way to the bottom, and then all the way to the top again, and then all the way to the bottom again, until I'm pretty happy with it. 
So now it looks pretty good, right? It looks a bit like Ed's electric. I'm gonna go back to this shape and turn off the stroke, the outline. And then it looks almost perfect. I'm gonna make this just a bit taller. Oh, I failed. Just a bit taller. There we go. And then I'm gonna bump it down just a, a notch. It looks pretty good. Now, there's one last thing. When I move my logo around, look at that. Oops, sorry. When I move my logo around, the E stays where it is. What I wanna actually do is subtract this E from this shape. And some people are like, what do you mean? I don't, I don't exactly mean subtract in the way of math, but if I put a, that pink outline back on, you can see, oh, there's the pink outline there. And it still kind of runs in behind the E and under the E, and it doesn't go here or along this part. Okay, so if I was gonna laser cut this, or if I was gonna put it on a t-shirt, you want this not to be a white E, but you want it to actually be negative space. Right now it's not negative space, it's just a white E that I threw over top of it, right? Because I this could be a pink E or a blue E, right? I just threw it over top. I want it to actually subtract from that shape. So to do that, I select them both again, and I do this, object group, effect, pathfinder, and this time I choose subtract. For this to work, the E layer has to be above the other layer. So when I look here, I just have to check, is my E layer above the other thing? It is. So here we go, effect, pathfinder, subtract. And now it becomes one shape and you can see that that red line follows along. So why does that matter? And here's why. So let's say I was gonna print this logo on a white t-shirt. It would look great, right? It looks good here. But let's say my t-shirt was um, blue. Okay, I was gonna put it on a blue t-shirt. Let me make that blue and let me make that path, that layer behind the other layer, just for a second. So right, I know I'm moving fast. You don't have to worry about doing this. I move it below. Oops. There we go. It looks pretty good, right? That I could change the color of this to anything and you'll always see through because I've subtracted that E from the shape. If I had left that as a white E, I would have, it wouldn't work, right? When I went to print it on a t-shirt or something, it would have, it would print the, the white. Does that make sense? And that's why I've subtracted it. Okay, so that's pretty much how you make a logo with negative space. Thank you. I'm gonna delete that shape now.